Let's go back just one moment. The main argument in my book is simply this. A great German philosopher named George Hegel said that the greatest human desire is to be recognized. He called it the thymotic urge. In our everyday parlance, everybody wants to be a somebody, nobody wants to be a nobody. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. We all want to be distinguished in some way, meaning we want to be special. The question comes down to this. For the modern American male, how does he become special? How does he distinguish himself? Will anyone give a damn if he does homework with his kids? No. Will anyone care if he's faithful to, faithful to his wife? No. You interviewed Donald Trump. What's he famous for? Is he famous for his personal achievements or his professional achievements? We are prepared to continue to lionize him despite failure in his personal achievements, and I'm not judging him for them. I'm simply mentioning that we want to apprentice ourselves to him, to be like him, because today, professional achievement for men is everything. That's why these men don't marry. They refrain from marrying not because they're not ready. I mean, if you're ready to go and fight the bad guys in Iraq at 18, that's a far bigger responsibility than raising a child. You have men who are literally going to die if you make a mistake. You, you're going to fire on people, and if you make a mistake, you'll kill children. That's a huge responsibility. And yet, at 18, we believe people are responsible enough. You need to be 30 to be a parent. Besides the fact that what I normally see is those men who really delay marriage and delay parenting, they continue to be boys. Their maturity doesn't begin to sprout because necessity is the mother of invention. We become more mature when the opportunity calls upon us to, to be so. Why do we call the World War II generation the greatest generation? Was it because it just happened to be that over that four year period, everyone who born, was born was great? No. There was an international emergency. A guy named Hitler was taking over the world, and they responded to that call. Necessity is the mother of invention. They became great. All of us have greatness in, in potential form, but it's the confluence of that inner potential with external need that brings it out. So when you have a kid, it's like, you know, you, know, you need a license to uh, drive a car. Why don't you need a, be a license to be a parent? It's a far bigger responsibility. You can damage people a lot more. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> well. I think the government controls enough things. I don't know if I want them to tell me whether I need a license to have, to have children. The reason we don't get people to have a license is that we believe that when you have that child, something innate within you is awakened and you meet that responsibility. So saying, I have to wait till I'm mature, I don't think that's accurate. What have you seen, though, that leads you to the generalization that every guy who waits is just because of money? No, I don't think it's only because of money. I think there's no, many circumstances. I think men today don't know how to commit to women. They're becoming more commitment phobic. Women are also becoming commitment phobic, which is interesting. I think the healthy society is one which slowly witnesses the feminization of men, meaning men become more domesticated, they like kids more, they like commitment, they like monogamy. We're witnessing the opposite today, which is the masculinization of women. What is sex in the city You know that all the women are going to see? Sex in the City is about four women who really are guys in a woman's body. They, have, they exhibit all the, the traits of a the man. They're closer to each other than any man, the way, the way four guys used to be, you know? They have sex without feeling anything, sex without commitment, that's a masculine trait. They have huge commitment issues. I call them platonic lesbians. They're attracted to men, and they find sexual gratification with men, but they have no intimacy with men. That's that was a traditional male problem, right? Men would have sex with their wives, but they would really come to life playing cards with their buddies. And their wives always complain about that. You never want to be home with me. So, I'm not saying that men are refraining from marrying because they want to make money. It's the whole package. Men are refraining from marriage because, they, because being a good man, devoted to one woman and making her happy, is no longer the definition of a successful male. Once upon a time, that was part and parcel of being a success. There were many companies who, before they gave you a, a, a raise or a promotion, they would look at the kind of family man you were. Is he responsible? Is he disciplined? And a guy who, let's say, abandoned his family was seen as someone without honor. Now, that's out the window. As long as you can turn a buck, we don't care about your ethics. And I think that's the wrong message. I think it's harming us. And beyond it being wrong ethically, I think it's actually wrong personally. You see, at the heart of the American experience, and as you know, but I begin the book by saying this, is this phenomenal contradiction. This is the great conundrum of modern American living that all of us refuse to address. How could we be, on the one hand, the richest society in the history of the world? 
with a higher standard of living, and yet we consume, another Washington Post statistic from the book review section about four weeks ago, mm -hmm. yet we consume three quarters of the Earth's antidepressants. So we are one sixtieth of the world's population, and we consume three quarters of the Earth's antidepressants. Rich, prosperous, successful, miserable, depressed, suicidal, it, it, it doesn't go together. Answer, all this money is not making us happy. Money is there to build a family, to participate in the community, to do the things that really give you a sense of purpose. Like if I had not been born, the world would be missing something, because look at these kids who wait for me to come home. Look at this woman who smiles when I'm in her life. But when you just make money, you're a cog in a machine. They don't give a damn about you. If you were struck by lightning tomorrow, they would miss the money you didn't make for them. That's it. That's my argument. It's the personal relationships that give us stability and happiness. And because Americans only know how to produce and don't know how to relate, that's why we're so miserable and depressed. Uh, I'd feel <laughs> Uh, for the record, my wife cannot be here tonight, but I have a note. Says, Dear Rabbi, my husband is not a broken American male. He paid me 50 bucks to say that. <laughs> um, moving on. Um, something you wrote on page 89, which I, I was really curious about. Men are born undistinguished and unimportant. They are vacuous and empty on the inside. At least little girls are born pretty and with the power to attract men. Uh, I would say, as the father of a five-year-old daughter, I would hope she has more qualities in this world than simply that. But uh, where does the statement come from? Okay. Uh, well, obviously, I'm the father of five daughters, and I want them to distinguish themselves with their minds. The book that preceded this book is a book called Hating Women, and it's about what we're doing to women in the United States, which is, uh, you know, Time Magazine reported that 40% of our uh, high school girls wear thongs to high school usually with the underwear band showing above their jeans. This is at school. Then we have our girls paying $25,000 a year or more to get a college education who will lift their shirts, because it's specifically college girls that do this for the Girls Gone Wild videos, where we are sexually exploiting our, our, our women. And it's showing in the bad example that we have for our young girls. There's only three women in America who have a 90% name recognition percentile. They are Oprah Winfrey, Hillary Clinton, and Condoleezza Rice. After that, for the 90 percentile, you get into, you know the names, Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, the list would go on and on. So we're not modeling for our young girls great examples of intelligent women who succeed. We need more. I, I say what I said in the book because we have to recognize that even without all of that, boys and girls are judged by very different standards. We really don't know how to raise boys. With girls, we're nurturing, we're more forgiving, we're kinder, we're gentler. With boys, we believe we have to take a hammer and a chisel and sort of mold them and shape them into a particular vision of what we expect them to be. Boys don't cry, we know all the cliches, but the cliches happen to be true. That's why they are cliches. Boys aren't allowed to show emotion. We make them hyper-competitive. Um, Yes, there's competition for girls as well, but it's never as pronounced as it is for boys. I think we have to begin to make a decision in America. And sometimes it comes down to making that decision. We're doing a radio show about this, I think, on Friday. What's going to come first in how you raise your boys? Making them into young champions? I know parents who make their kids into sporting champions, chess champions. They want them to get to Harvard Business School. Or stability of character, making them feel comfortable in their own skin. Even if they end up in a middle class, running a middle class family with a house that isn't so big, but they're actually joyous, they celebrate life, they're, they're good fathers, haven't you succeeded? Must we all be like Donald Trump? Do you realize that Donald Trump has become the most famous businessman in America? And yet he exhibits, and this is not a criticism, I've had an exchange with him recently, but I think he would admit he exhibits none of the classic characteristics of male honor. He has redefined male honor. In other words, Honor used to be humility, right? You don't brag about how much money you have. When, 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 when Forbes calls him and says, we're putting you in the list at a billion dollars this year, he'll say, what are you talking about? I'm worth seven billion. And he'll start listing, and this happens every year, and they always write about it. Mm -hmm. So humility out the window. To put your name on everything, on absolutely everything. Do you know how this country was built? It was built by a man named George Washington, who was the commander of the Continental Army. And when he won the war, he resigned his commission. He went back to being a farmer. These were great men.